Hi everyone, it's Ian here from Crack Maths. In this tutorial, tutorial 14, we are looking at how to find the original amount after a percentage change. Okay, firstly, we're going to look at a method using direct proportion. And secondly, we're going to look at a method using the percentage decimal equivalent multipliers. Okay, so let's get cracking and have a look at direct proportion first. So for those of you that might have forgotten what direct proportion is, direct proportion is something that I truly believe in. I think it's one of the key things you need to master to get functional skills maths. And quite simply, it is the relationship between things that are worth something. So things that increase and decrease together. The example that I always like to give is um, items that cost something. OK, so for example, we could look at, I don't know, a pair of shoes is a pair of shoes costs 30 pounds. OK, and you wanted to buy two pairs of these shoes, uh, that would be £60. If you wanted to buy three of them, that would be £90 and so on. So for every additional pair of shoes that you buy, the price increases with the cost. OK, so it's fixed and they go up and down together. OK, so let's have a look at how this links to this question here. OK, a number has decreased by 20%. The result is 80. What is the original number? So. With percentage, I always like to start off by identifying the 100%. But in this case, the 100% is what we need to find out. But I'm going to write it at the top anyway. So we've got 100% equals mystery. OK, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the percentage that we do have. OK, so the 100% was decreased by 20%. So that means if we started with 100% and we've had a 20% decrease, that means we're left with 80%. So we know that 80% equals 80. OK, great. Well, that's nice and straightforward. But I'm going to go through the method. 80% equals 80. So in order to get up to 1%, um, there's several things you could do, actually. Uh, we could divide these both by 4, and that would give us 20%. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to divide them both by 80. OK, so 80% divided by 80 gives us 1. 80 divided by 80 gives us 1 as well. So we now know that 1% equals 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these both by 100, OK, which is going to give us 100% and it's going to give us 100. So in this scenario, we know that 100% equals 100. Right, let's look at question 2. After a 15% increase, a value becomes 345. Right, so what does this mean? We need to find what the original value was. So after a 15% increase, a value increases to become 345. So remember, let's identify the 100%. The 100%, I'm going to write it at the top here, we do not know. So 100% equals mystery. Now what we've got is we know that when 100% is increased by 15%, it equals 345. So 100% increased by 15% means 115%. So we have 115% and that is worth 345. So 100% we don't know, but we do know that 115% is 345. Right, now let's go down to 1%. So 115 divided by 115 gives us 1. 345 divided by 115, let's have a look, 3. So we know that 1% is 3. So if we know that 1% is 3, now we can multiply both these by 100 to take us back up to 100%. So 1 times 100 gives us 100%. 3 times 100 gives us 300. There we go. So 100% is 300. Therefore, the original amount before the increase was 300. OK, so let's have a look at one more question and then I will go through the method using the decimal equivalent percentage multipliers. If you want to, if you don't want to learn both methods, you can skip that. But it's worthwhile always having these options. So. Question three, after a 25 percent decrease, a quantity becomes 180. What was the original quantity? So we've got a 25 percent decrease. And we know that after the 25% decrease, 
we've got 180. So we start off by writing our 100%. So 100% equals mystery number. Now, 25% decrease. So 100% decreased by 25% equals 75%. So we know that 75% equals the 180. Now remember, this is direct proportion. So we can now multiply and divide both sides as we wish. So 75 divided by 75 gives us 1%. 180 divided by 75 equals 2.4. Now let's multiply both of these by 100 to find out what our original value was. So 1% times 100 gives us 100%. 2.4 times 100 gives us 240. So there we go. The original amount for this question would have been 240. Okay, great. Now let's take a look at the same three questions using the decimal equivalent percentage multipliers. So if you recall, the decimal equivalent percentage multipliers was the decimal version of the percentage that we wanted to find. In this circumstance, we need to think about this scenario. So we had an amount and we multiplied it by the decimal equivalent of the percentage and it gave us an answer. Here, we have the answer, we have the percentage, we don't have the amount, okay? So we're going to have to use this value, we're gonna to have to use this percentage in a reverse calculation. So let's have a look at question one. If a number is decreased by 20% and the result is 80, what is the original number? So a decrease of 20% means that you're looking for 80%. Have a think about that. A decrease of 20% means you're looking for 80%. So to find 80%, we multiply by the decimal equivalent of 80%, which is 80 divided by 100. So we're 80%, to find 80%, you multiply by 0 0.8. Have a think about it. If you wanted to find 80% of an amount, you'd multiply by 0 0.8. So here we go. In this question, we know that the original amount multiplied by 0 0.8 equals 80. So here we use a reverse calculation. So if two things multiply together to give one thing, the reverse calculation is that answer divided by one of the two things to get the thing that you're looking for. <laughs> Let me show you. 80 divided by 0 0.8 equals 100. So this is our original amount. And this is the same as we saw in the first question. Right, if you want to pause and watch that again, I would do that. Or you can follow me through another example and see if you get on well. Right, question two. After a 15% increase, a value becomes 345. Right, so we've got to think about what percentage we were after when we're increasing by 15% and that works like this if you want to increase by 15% you're looking for 115% now the decimal equivalent of 115% is 115 divided by 100 so 115 divided by 100 equals 1.15. So remember from when we were using our percentage decimal equivalent multipliers before, the amount multiplied by 1.15 equals the amount after the increase. Okay, so amount times 1.15 equals 345. Now we need to do our reverse calculation to find the amount. So we do 345 divided by 1.15. So 3, 4, 5 divided by 1.15 equals 300.
Okay, there we go. It's the same as we got before, but it's just a different method. Okay, right. Last question on this, and then we're going to look at a scenario question. So here we go. After a 25% decrease, a quantity becomes 180. So we've gone for a 25% decrease this time. So remember, a 25% decrease from 100% is 75% because 100% take away 25 equals 75. So we've got our percentage that we were looking for. So before we were looking for 75%. So we've got our amount times our decimal equivalent to 75% equals our 180. So 75% divided by 100 is 0 0.75. So our decimal equivalent of 75% is 0 0.75. So here we have it, amount multiplied by 0 0.75 equals 180. So what we need to do now is our reverse calculation which is going to be 180 divided by 0 0.75. So 180 divided by 0 0.75 is 240. Okay, great. If you need to think about that, I would pause the video here, go back a bit and rewatch these steps. Okay, it's a very straightforward method once you've got it, but it is difficult to understand to start off with. So don't worry if it hasn't quite sunk in. Right, now we're going to move on and look at some scenario questions over on Crack Maths. Okay, so let's have a look at the first question on the Crack Maths website, which is a shirt is on sale for 20% off and the sale price is £40. What was the original price? Okay, so picture it. You're in a shop. There's a sale going on. There's an item there. It's a jumper. It's got 20% off and it's now worth £40. Have a think. So it wants to know the original price. So the original price is 100%. So we can say that 100% equals question mark. This is what we want to know. Okay, 100% equals question mark. We know that it's a 20% reduction. So we've got 80%. So we know that 80% is worth 40 pounds. Now let's go down to 1%. So 80 divided by 80 equals 1%. 40 divided by 80 equals 0 0.5. There we go. So we now know that 1% of the cost of the jumper was 0 0.5. Right, now let's find 100% because remember 100% is our original amount. So 0 0.5 times by 100 gives us 50. There we go. The original cost of the jumper was 50 pounds. Right, I'm gonna try one more of these questions just because I know this is a tough topic and it's good to get more practice. So this question says, a company reduced its workforce by 10% and now employs 450 people. How many employees did the company originally have? So we don't know how many employees they originally had. But we do know that 90% of the employees equals 450 people because 100% of the employees we don't know, but they reduce the number of employees by 10%. So 10% off 100% gives us 90%. And we know that 90% equals 450. So therefore, if 90% equals 450, we can divide both sides by 90 to get 1%. So 90 divided by 90 equals 1. 450 divided by 90 equals 5. So we can see that 1% of the company is 5 employees. Now, if we multiply both of that by 100, we get the original amount. So 5 times 100 equals 500. There we go. So the original amount of employees in that company was 500 employees. Wonderful. Right, okay, that's that for this session. Um, remember, with these percentage questions, there's multiple ways of doing them. Whichever method you choose to your, for yourself, just pick the one that works, okay? But again, there's merits in both. 
otherwise than that, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much. Bye.